Coming up on the program, it's time to harvest our yacons. The frost has killed them back. Now it's time to see what we really have under the soil. And we have late blight, a word that not very many gardeners want to hear. We'll explain how you get it, what you do when you got it, and what to do to get rid of it. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic, flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sioux Growing Supply Com. Stop! Before you dig, call Digger's Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Digger's Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors, simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors, HappyLeafLED.com it's, they've died back from our frost. Now fortunately for us here in zone 5A in Milwaukee uh, area in southeast Wisconsin, we've actually had 24 days longer of growth in 2016 than we did in 2015. In 2015, the frost came and killed our yacons on October the, the 17th. This year, it's happened on November the 12th. So we're gonna dig these up and we know how to grow these. If you want more information on more details on how to grow yacons, you can go to our website, thewisconsinvegetablegarden.com. There's a yacon tab, some videos, and some uh, information there on how to grow them. Uh, it can be grown in, in zone 5A, and I've seen them grown in zone 4, and some individuals have been successful at growing them in Canada. Uh, it is a South American root crop, and this is what the plant looks like. Now, the reason that you'll see yacon plants with flowers on them. Now, yacons need six months of outdoor weather, frost-free weather, to develop flowers. We just came about three weeks short of that. These typically will go in about the same time as your tomatoes will, and they will get between four and five, even six, or some seven foot, or some six and a half, seven foot ones up there. So uh, what we're gonna do here, and you save them by the rhizomes, that, and we'll go over that. So we're gonna dig up this one here. Uh, we're gonna start with this one. We're gonna have a lot of, lot of tubers here. And you wanna be careful because you don't wanna snap these tubers off. So you see the top growth here, uh, it's dead, so there's not going to be any opportunity, even though we have about 14 more days of frost-free weather, there's not going to be any opportunity for the plant to develop flowers, simply because the top has died off. Now you want to start these about three, two to three months before you're intending on putting them in the ground. So it's a very long process of about 280-ish days from time you start the rhizome to the time you harvest the, the plant. Uh, there's a number of dishes you can make with this. So we're just going to, well, I need to, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're dealing with these yacons, you want to give a, a nice uh, area here where you can grab and pull because it, sometimes it's a two-person process. And so you want a good growth. You can see the stalks are, are uh, good compost material and they're, they're uh, hollow in the center. And there's a, uh, that's good compost material. So we'll get these cut back. And even got zinnias still growing because of the cover of the uh, the yacons. So, well, uh, we'll get the fork, we'll get the shovel, and I'm going to dig up this zinnia simply because it's going to be in the way. But we'll... all right, so I'm not really sure what I've got here. Uh, so I'm being very gentle with digging it up because you see right here that is what I'm looking for. That is 
one of the rhizomes and it's broke off, which that's fine. But that is one of the tubers there. So um, I'm gonna put that there. And hopefully there's many, many more of those in here. And I just gotta figure out how to get, get it loosened up. And I'm sure they're go, they go deep in the ground here because we had good work this soil really well. Okay, maybe, let's see if I can. Woo! Look at that. I hope we snapped that one off. Okay, that, so, so they go down pretty deep and that one snapped off. So I'll have to dig and find the remaining ones of those. So it's gonna be a little bit of time here for us to get all these dug up, but that is what we were hoping for. Uh, just in this tuber alone um, is more than what we had last year in the two plants because we didn't know how to grow these. We'd done some research. Basically it was a trial and error. And again, these are like potatoes, so you kind of want to be as careful as you can so you don't sca uh, skin, you know, tear the skin off of it. But uh, that is, uh, oh, uh, uh, that is an incredible uh, sight here. Um, and there are, here's the rhizomes right here. That's these purple things. And what we'll do is we'll just clean this up real nice, get the roots off it, and those will get buried in sand and put in the bottom of the refrigerator. But uh, I'm gonna work on it and the rest of that root out. And we've got a job ahead of us here to get these yacons dug up and we'll see what we actually have. All right, so we've got four plants, something like that, dug up. Find a lot of big, big roots here. And we've kind of noticed that uh, just in the digging of them, that some of these roots do kind of crack. And one way to preserve them is you can put a wax on them. Uh, that's one way of uh, prolonging them. If you have a root cellar, uh, you can put them in that. They will uh, last a little while. I mean, obviously that's them, but we've got cracks on some of these. Um, you can see just the stress, I guess, of opening them out of the ground has uh, caused them to get some crack fractures. But anyway, uh, big roots on these. Uh, last year, with the two plants that we had, this was literally how much yacon we got last year with two plants. But since we understood how to grow them, the soil preparation, and these, these yacons build really good microbial life in the soil too. Now, one thing, uh, I trimmed this one back, and what we're wanting to save is, again, these purple nodulars. These are what is called rhizomes. These are very similar to the procedure that you would do with potatoes, which means this here is one seed. I got one, two, three different growth tips. I can actually cut that in half at the time of harvest, or at the time of planting in, in three months before I'm gonna put them in the ground, and I can divide that and get that to root. So actually I've divided that. You don't wanna get it so small where there's no meat. Now, we've played around with them and made them very small and they have taken root, but uh, that's, that's where that is. Uh, those you don't wanna eat because that's valuable. Uh, you, if you get yacons, you buy once, never have to buy again if you save them, as we have here. Uh, so we've got a lot of yacons already. Uh, we still got a number of plants here to dig up, but uh, I, I'm very pleased with what we're getting. Again, we do have uh, some stress fractures here, which is fine. Uh, we'll deal with that. So uh, we'll figure out what we'll dig up the rest of them and see where we're at. So as darkness has fallen on the garden, we have completed our yacon harvest for the year. We got right now these two trays here is a total of 80.5 six pounds and they're still these are the rhizomes here and I've still got to go through and I'll do this in the house in in good light and that there that's a root that's edible that there's a root that's edible and then I'll clean all that out and then the rhizomes here will uh, make this very as small as possible and put in a bucket of sand and keep in the fridge or we might even experiment with keeping it in the uh, attic steps which is uh, very cold uh, uh, during the winter. Now we did have a lot of a handful of casualties which is normal unless you go in there and physically remove the dirt around them. Uh, uh, time, uh, timely, takes a lot of time on that. Uh, we punctured some of them with a fork so I'll clean these up and there's a lot of things that we can do with them. Uh, mainly what we can uh, prep these and freeze them. We can put them in soups. Uh, we can extrude out of them. Um, so 
Uh, you could excavate it, as we talked about earlier, with a backhoe, and that would prevent a lot of this where you could just lift it up, but we don't all have backhoes. Um, also, if you're in a raised bed, it would be it would work better because that soil is more loose. This is garden soil. It was very um, it was tilled, it was loosened with the garden fork. I went in there and spent a good afternoon making sure that was good and loose. And it, they, a lot of them grew uh, downwards. Uh, this one here, uh, you can see where you hit it with a fork, it just really erupts with a lot of liquid. But uh, many of them, what we found was wherever the centralized stalk was, there wasn't a whole lot of outward growth. It was mainly vertical or, or down. Uh, you may have had a few of them, like if this was a stalk, you may have had maybe one or two like that, but most of them were in the downward position. And the smaller ones, uh, like this here, we did come up with uh, you know smaller ones here, but these will all be examined, looked at, and will have minimal amount of waste and loss on this. So we had 14 plants there, gave us 80.6 pounds. I don't know what that figures out average-wise. Uh, we still have two at the uh, front yard garden, which uh, we'll see what that uh, gets. And then sister-in-law still has several of them. So we're going to have a lot of rhizomes that we're going to save. And uh, these are very nice ones here. But uh, with the Yakon harvest, we ended up getting, as I talked about earlier, 24 more days to uh, grow them than we did last year. That definitely had a contributing factor to the amount of tubers, but we had irrigation on them. We had good, good loose soil. We gave them the required amount of nutrients that uh, we have found. So we're very happy with this, and there's a lot of things that we'll be doing with the Yakons. Okay, so the Yakons have died back because of the frost, and that's the indication of when you want to harvest them. You saw us harvest the ones at the large garden and got a total of uh, 80, 86 pounds of uh, tubers out of the ground. This is a container. Yakon or Yuka, Y-U-C-C-A, uh, I think is how they, they pronounce it, or Yakon, Y-A-C-A-N. And it's grown in a 20-gallon grow bag and is recommended really nothing smaller than like a, a half of a whiskey barrel type of grow bag. So like a big grow bag, the 60-gallon grow bags from Root, root Maker, uh, root, root Maker, uh, Root Trapper 2. This is a 20-gallon uh, Root Trapper 2, RootMaker.com. Uh, grow bag. So we're going to see how it does in this particular uh, situation here because we had limited space and it really didn't get watered as much as it should have. So first thing we're going to do here is cut back the top uh, which is compostable and then the cage is here simply because we wanted to try some things out. These didn't get nearly as big as the ones that the, at the large garden did. So we're going to see how uh, how well they have grown in this situation. All right, so since we're not in the ground, I'm just going to dump this out and be very gentle with it. If you're in the ground, then again, there's some uh, kind of a two-person process works best. So I'm just going to basically like removing a plant from a, a pot that you're going to plant. And we'll see how, how well uh, this turns out. certain point here I'm just going there okay you can start seeing some of the roots there all right so I'm just going to gently or as best as I can pull this oh that's those are tearing but there's some rhizomes there so there's some roots there roots there oh, that's a nice root there I'm just going to pour the rest of this out in the garden here and see if I've got anything left. Oh, this is one that broke off. It's a nice thing about having them in a container. You know what's left and let's see where this one, this one broke off. Um, I think it was right there. Yeah, that would a nice uh, long root there. So growing them in a container, it does work. Obviously, the larger the container, the better your opportunity is to get large tubers. So any, anything uh, large containers uh, and good enriched soil work very well. So we have late blight, and that's a word that gardeners cringe at the thought of. Late blight is an air-distributed spore 
that affects your tomato plants. It does affect potatoes as well. What the perfect conditions for late blight are, moist, cool conditions. That's what we've had for the last couple of weeks. And this has infected one of, and I've seen it affect other patches of tomatoes. Your sign of late blight is the leaves begin to dis get discolored. Your stalks get discolored and blackened in portions. And then you'll also see your fruit, which now is, even if it's ripe, it's inedible. It gets affected with this very unpleasant uh, mess here. So what can you do to protect yourself from late blight? Well, it's really difficult to protect yourself from late blight since it's an air di uh, dis distributed spore, unless you're in like a greenhouse. One thing you can do is once you see late blight, you can use you can apply a copper fungicide. Now this is not going to stop late blight. This will slow it down by uh, experts' recommendations. The preferred method of ex uh, of getting rid of late blight is just get rid of the plant. You can burn these plants, but also you want to be careful because if you're in a community garden, an allotment, neighboring gardens at your residence, those spores can be transferred through the, the particles that go up in the air. Ideally, you would want to take and put this stuff in your trash, or if you're living on a homestead or a a place where you have somewhere you can dump it, just dump it as far away from your growing location as possible. You don't want to compost this. You definitely don't want to put this in the uh, road gutter or in front of the house for local municipality pickup, even though they want you to, and they don't want you to put it in your local municipal, municipal trash. The reason why you don't want to put it in the street is the same reason why you don't want to put it in your compost pile. You're going to have the city pick it up. It's a diseased plant. They're going to take it to their facility, compost it, and then everybody in the city is going to go back, or many people will go back and pick up that fresh compost the next growing season that contain the spores of late blight, or can potentially contain the spores of late blight. So the best scenario here, the best situation is to rip it up, put it in bags, put it in your municipal trash so it looks like trash. And you want to be very careful when handling this because the spores, especially if you've got other plants, if this is early in the season or later on like we are, this can spread on your clothing. If you have your hands dirty, you touch another plant from when you're harvesting those ripe tomatoes, it can spread that way. So you want to be very careful with this. And uh, especially dragging it through the garden, municipal, or garden, community garden, allotment, that type of thing. So we've got uh, issues here. And what you want to do here, we're going to take the strings. We're going to take everything. Normally, we save the strings for these trellises here, and we'll use them again. With this instance, we're going to take everything and get rid of it. The only thing we're going to save here is the metal post. And we're going to wipe them down with a bleach solution with the hopes of making sure that they don't contain any late blight spores that can be spread next year's growing season. Late blight is not, not nothing resembles late blight. Uh, it's not comparable to early blight. Early blight is a, uh, a fungus in the soil that splashes up on your plants that affects the leaves, but doesn't affect the fruit. And it can, you can kill your plant, but you, there's ways of slowing it down, removing it, uh, the early blight. With late blight, once you have it, there's no way of scientifically removing it. There's a way of slowing down like I talked about. So we'll come in here, we'll remove all of this, bag it up, be careful, put it in the municipality trash, and then uh, we're done with the tomatoes. And I have seen it, it can spread here. I've seen it in other patches. So late blight's not a disease that I uh, would hope on you, but with this information, at least if you have it or might get it, you will now know what it is, what to look for, and how to uh, fix the problem. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Barrett, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.